Hey everybody, Proportional Response here. Um, I hope I'm not the one breaking this news to you that you don't know already. Um, there's many of us finding out about it, although details are pretty limited. Uh, it looks like DPR Jones is no longer with us. He passed away in January. Um, on his channel is a video, uh, it's just a shot that's up, and the family asked people to do a, you know, raise the glass, uh, like a lot of us did for a hitch. So, uh, I'll be more than happy to do that um, and tell you about DPR Jones if you didn't know. If you don't know, back in the absolute, you know, just the pinnacle of YouTube days, DPR Jones was one of the giants. Uh, he has still been around. Uh, I never had a chance to meet him. Uh, I know he's still been active. I kind of stepped away from it, been doing other things, obviously, since I haven't uploaded many videos and everything. Um, but what I specifically remember about DPR Jones, it was one incident uh, that really stands out head and shoulders about all the others. We were having some gathering, uh, it was a, a live video gathering on blog TV or something like that, like we used to do. And I made mention that I believed in the death penalty uh, for crimes. And he paused everything. He's, what? You know, no you don't. I'm like, yeah, I had, this has been a lifelong you know, position that I had. And so we started to argue and what I thought would be like a five minute exchange of ideas turned into hours, hours and hours of nonstop. And I honestly went into it thinking, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a change his mind on this because I feel confident in all the positions that I held. But as it kept going on, he kept arguing and arguing and it was one specific thing that he kept coming back to, rolling back to. It was one of the original questions is that I had always held that life is the absolute pinnacle of importance to any being. Once you lose your life, you lose everything else. So maintaining and uh, continuing your life is of the utmost importance, an idea that I still hold, um, as long as it is a life that you want to live. That being said, um, he kept asking the same question over and over again. How do you reduce the probability of executing someone who is innocent to zero. Well, there's you go through a trial. That's not reducing it to zero. Well, you have them on camera. That's not reducing it to zero. You know, state of mind, mistaken identity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A confession could have been, you know, beaten out of someone. This went on and on and on for hours. At the end of that, I was like, I'm done talking about this. I need to digest everything. So I sat there and rolled it over for about a week, um, week, week and a half that I thought it over. I really couldn't work around that philosophical problem that he had posed. So about a week, week and a half later, I talked to him again and I'm like, all right, you win. You got me. I changed my position. Ever since that conversation, I have held the position that the death penalty is uh, not virtuous. It shouldn't be used, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that that really went to the core of what one of the things that DPR Jones stood for is that your positions should be logical and rational and you should be able to argue them. And if you can't defend your position uh, in the light or in the opposition of arguments that you can't defend, then you should change your position regardless of what that position is or regardless how you personally feel about that position. That's what stands up to me most about the EPR Jones. That's what I, I'm sure that I will take away and remember the most. Not even talking about, you know, the fact that he was extremely funny, really witty, really quick on his feet. Um, yeah, just a cool, cool guy. Feel bad that I never got to meet him face to face. We talked for years. We knew each other. I worked on the uh, Medicine Sans Frontier, you know, stuff. And every time that he came over and I had a chance to meet him, I couldn't go. I went to the UK once. I couldn't meet up with him because he couldn't make time. We just never met up. But I think that that was the point. Um, and a big part of the whole YouTube community is that you became close friends. Sometimes you met, sometimes you didn't. But you became friends and allies for a purpose uh, regardless of where you were, how much money you had, all you need is a camera and an internet connection. And that's it. I'll tell you one funny, 
I'll tell you a funny one that I remembered. He told me a story one time. Uh, we were all in this big thing, and he said it first, and everybody was like aghast. And then by the end of it, everybody had flipped. So he told a story that he was at work, and he had some intestinal issues. <laughs> and he ran to the bathroom, but he didn't make it. He ended up crapping his pants. And everybody laughed. It's like, holy cow, you know, that's, you can't believe that happened to you. He was like, name me the person that something like that hasn't happened to. Every, he was absolutely convinced. Every single person has had, I crap my pants story. And no one really said anything. And someone else, I don't remember who it was, spoke first. I spoke second. I was like, so let me tell you my, I crapped my, uh, my pants story one time and I told my story and everyone in the chat, everyone who was there, and it was a lot of people, eventually had to admit that even though we're all adults and we haven't uh, purposely, probably not purposely, crapped our pants since we were kids, is that sooner or later you're going to have an incident and something's going to happen. <laughs> And I remember at the end, he was rolling. He was like, all of you, all of you were laughing at me. And all of you cracked your pants too, so I don't want to hear it. That was a funny day. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not going to keep going on and on. Uh, I liked him a lot. He was a pretty cool guy. So as I raised the glass, I'm drinking a Bloody Mary because he was a great Bloody Brit. There's the UDPR.